our nation to know that we have had this type of an incident occur on our campus. I'll take questions for the chief. How were you able to disarm or get him so fast? Did he just run out of ammunition or anything like that? I, I'm not really sure about the ammunition part, but I can tell you that our officers are highly trained and we trained for this type of an incident and we were able to get to the building and our officers immediately, one officer immediately went to the suspect to take him down. Chief, what can you tell us about the suspect and did he say anything he did? He, he said nothing and, and you know, as part of investigation, we're not gonna engage a suspect in questioning at that time. That's something that, you know, all of the wonderful uh, backup we had from starting with CMPD, CFD, FBI, SBI, ATF, medic, I mentioned fire, just multiple agencies. There isn't one agency that didn't respond to our needs on campus. Um, but the, so the suspect was taken into custody. And as I said, we, we, it's not up to us to question him, but that's gonna be an ongoing investigation held by CMPD's homicide unit. Can you confirm that there were two fatalities and six people shot? Can you confirm that? I can confirm that, yes. So we had two fatalities. We have three that are in critical condition and one that is not. Chief, was this a person a familiar face at all? Was he on the radar at all for you guys? No, not, on, not that we know of. Again, that's something that is an ongoing investigation that could reveal something like that. But I can tell you right now, it, it's not he is not somebody that is on our radar can you officially release his name uh, that's something that I'm going to wait uh, until I get approval because of course CMPD's homicide in conjunction with many other agencies are conducting this investigation at this point so before I disclose that information I want to make certain that that's uh, you know okay with them Chief, could you clarify? You know, I really, I probably, again, you know, questions specific to the suspect at this time is something that, you know, we really aren't ready to disclose just because, you know, that's, we don't want to do that. So we're, we are waiting as soon as, as soon as we get the approval though, I certainly have no, no problem with disclosing that information, nor does Chief Putney. What about the victims? Are they students? Are they faculty or staff? Uh, you know, we're waiting till family is notified. Uh, we're going to make sure of that that's something that, that is handled by that specific team handling that. So, you know, again, the specifics to the victims and that kind of thing, we're gonna, just going to hold on before we release that specific information. Chief, can you talk about the went to the building, the library, correct? No, that is not, not correct. He went to a building, and can you give us an idea like where in the building this, this happened? Was well, again, you know, I don't want to give out specifics of the investigation because it is an, a very active homicide investigation at this time. So what I can say is, yes, he did enter a building on campus. It was not the library, um, if, if you've heard that. It, it was not. That is not accurate. What kind of, what kind of weapon was used and what, if any other weapons or things were recovered from the suspect? It's part of the investigation, again, you know, that's specifics. Um, to, to the investigation and, and you know it's just something we until I talk more with Homicide and with Chief Putney's team I, I really am not at you know I can't disclose that. Chief, Chief you, you mentioned that one officer, officer went in initially by himself. We had himself. multiple officers that went in. Oh, we had probably two or three. And they all went in together? Yes they, they immediately we are trained to re <coughs> if we have any type of a situation like that we train to go to the sound so those officers were moving toward whatever they heard. I didn't talk to them, and I'm not saying they heard anything. I'm just saying they're trained to do that, and that's training that we engage in twice a year, and as you can see, it's important to do. Can you, do you uh, give an estimate? Do you think your officers saved lives? Like, was he the shooter actively shooting people and they stopped him? I'm not sure about as far as him being an active shooter, but what I can say is our officers' actions definitely save lives there's no doubt about that how quickly we got your officers able to get there in the building on the scene from what happened i want to say it was it was minutes it seemed i would you know i came in behind them so i mean it was we were all uh we were actually in a roll call for an event that was going to occur on campus we had just broken from that we were en route to that and when we heard this call go out everyone converged immediately
that was available. What is the active shooter plan for the university? I saw a police car from as far as Mint Hill. What, how do you, uh, what's the plan with officers and departments in the area? Well, I mean, you know, what's going to happen on a situation like this is officers that are free, they're going to head this way to assist us if necessary. Uh, but I can tell you that CMPD uh, and CFD were on the scene very quickly uh, in mass and, and able to assist us if we needed it. But, you know, we had the situation secured and we were able to move forward from that. What sort of event were you already gathered for? It was going to be a concert at, um, uh, at our football stadium with uh, Waka Flocka. And Chief, okay. what's the rest of the night look like as far as the investigation goes? It's an all-nighter. It's going to be something that's very in-depth, and because it involves that, you know, our building, you know, it's just something that takes time. It's going to be methodical, much like the search we conducted of the, in, in clearing the entire campus. It was methodical. It was a uh, joint effort from all uh, law enforcement agencies that were present. Uh, again, I can't thank CMPD enough to make sure that they were out here to assist us directly as we went building by building to clear every building on campus. They're not, I don't believe so. Again, that's that's more getting into the weeds of this and that's something I'll I'll be able to figure out, but you know, you may know today is the, the last day of class. Do you know if there were a lot of people in the building where the shooter was, where you know how many people there were, where there were a lot of people I don't, I don't, I don't know the exact number. I don't think there was that. You know, it's hard to say. It really is. I don't think there was. Was the shooter randomly shooting people, or did he get specific targets in mind? Again, that's going to be something that we're going to leave up to. You know, our homicide. There, there'll be a lot more information, as you can imagine, that we'll be able to disclose as this investigation continues. Chief, you know what? what is your message for students and families tonight? You know, it's it's a message of unbelievable grief that we have that that this came to our campus but i can tell you one thing about it is that it's it it's something you have to prepare for today that's for sure do you know how this happened like from beginning to end like the time frame and all that do you guys have a sense of that yet we're working on that we don't have an exact sense but we are working on it i think that all of it happened very quickly obviously for us to get in the room and take them into custody it it occurred fast. He, he never had time to even get out of the room. Were all the victims in fact students or any of them professors or professors? Um, again, that's, that's something that we will disclose at a later date. Um, obviously, it's, it, we're still working on unification. So, you know, that's, we'll get to that. Chief, did you guys have active shooter training with CMPD? I'm sorry? Did CMPD provide active shooter training with your department? They have in the past. We've, we've actually, um, you know, when I first got here, we started working with their SWAT team, and we had members of their SWAT team that came out and, and helped us get through a lot of that type of work and a lot of that training. Did you do one this, this year? We didn't do one this year, but we have done joint, uh, we have had joint uh, training sessions, and we, we did have one, the most recent one that comes to mind is one involving uh, the light rail, before the light rail started running to campus, and we had a joint, we had a joint training session with that. Other than the shooter and I don't have that exact number. Um, there, there were some, yes. Do you have an estimation on how many students were in the classroom when this took place? No. I mean, I, I don't know that for sure. I mean, that's something that we can certainly figure out in time as we investigate. Um, there's multiple ways we do that. But that's something we don't know exact right now, so I wouldn't want to say. All right, guys, we're going to let the chief get back. We uh, will reconvene. We'll send out a, a time in the not-too-distant future. I would encourage everyone to follow our Twitter feed, and we'll announce a time when we'll reconvene for our next briefing. It'll be sometime this evening. I want to say thank you to all of you that have been out here in assisting us in this way in outreach to the community as well. Thank you. And, uh, you know, Chief Putney just brought something to my attention. We'd be remiss, too, if we didn't. Uh, governor's here. Uh, Governor just uh, arrived, and uh, he will be available in just a, a short while, along with some of our other local uh, politicians here, just eager to get out and speak with the community. Uh, when we do reconvene with uh, Chief uh, Baker and our 
other chiefs from fire, uh, our representative from Medic, and our, our police chief from Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department. Hopefully by the next time we reconvene, we'll have some more information that's been vetted and confirmed and get that concrete information out to you, to the community, so we can tamp down some of the, the misinformation that's been bubbling up. I appreciate the patience. I know it's been a trying night. I know a lot of you are on deadline. Uh, we do appreciate it. Please keep an eye on that Twitter feed, and we will reconvene shortly. You know, the lockdown is still going on or not? Rob. The lockdown? The lockdown. She had a question about yeah, the lockdown. So she what we're doing is, so we now have, we've, so we've gone, we've secured all the buildings, we've made sure that they're clear. We have, we do have students that can go back to their res hall rooms because you know we, we feel sure that, that that is safe. And so what we're trying to do is reconnect students so that they can go back there. Um, at some later date, obviously, we're going to allow students a much later date, not not tonight, to be able to retrieve laptops and think books, things of that nature that they need. Um, but that's something that we're working on. That's an ongoing effort and it's going to go on for a while. The students cannot get inside yet. They cannot get inside. They can go inside their res hall rooms. Yes? Yes. Okay, we're going to get them back to work. Jeff. Thank you very much. Jeff, Jeff will you guys be doing the lead investigation or CMPD? That's uh, going to be CMPD. CMPD does the lead on this. Just one quick question for clarification. Thanks. Okay right now. Either, but... I'm okay.